Red Lock Manical Wagon. That's it. We're done in we're done in Big Homo and now we are going north. We're leaving the 138 east. We're getting on a different road to go towards Labrador. I'm nervous. Well, it has been amazing so far, but we are officially about to head right off of the beaten pass, leave this oceanic part of the trip behind us along the St. Lawrence and head north into Labrador. So this will be my third time taking the only road into Labrador. It's an eight hour drive from basically Bay Como to Labrador City. Five of it was all gravel last time. I don't know if it's paved now, it might be, it might not be. Um, there was no shoulders, uh, there was logging trucks, literally, drifting around the corners with full loads of logs it's very windy and twisty so you know this is going to be a very different experience i think than um, the last portion of our trip has been we're going to be passing manic five dam and we're going to hopefully make it to a place called station wapishka uh, tonight which actually isn't quite in labrador it's still in quebec but just outside of lab city um, so yeah, uh, we're just making sure we got all the things we're going to need to be safe and as comfortable as possible out there. Uh, we have a, a place that we know we can camp safely, uh, predetermined, which is always good too. So anyways, um, ready to start a new portion of the journey. stimulates the economy, the construction, and all that kind of stuff. I mean, sometimes it could be chalked up as a make work project even, um, that, you know, or just for future tourism development down the road. And all these things make sense, but, you know, to me, more development means more people, and more people means less nature. So even though I feel like it's good, and it'll make the road better, and give people jobs and all that, it means that at the same time that it's not going to be as wild it's not going to be as as remote and that narrative just keeps pushing forward and forward every year so that in 20 years you have a vastly different area we're on the new road here one of the things that um, we were told about the alaska highway when we did that trip is that uh, before they did so much work to straighten it out that it was actually much more beautiful because turn so much more so you got different views whereas now you're just kind of staring at the same view for much longer and you don't get as many views. Sandwich between a few uh, 
18 wheelers here, which is interesting, and we're on a massive downhill. I'm just glad the guy behind us was able to slow down Hi. fast enough. Yeah, so far so good. Um, maybe about an hour or so out of Bay Como now. Got a, definitely a late start on the day. We picked up a couple small things in Bay Como. I slept in a bit today too, so, you know. Um, but, uh, I mean, we got out maybe quarter to eight. We usually been getting up earlier, so... Yeah, we're hoping we can make it up to um, where we need to make it by before dark. I think we'll be able to, no? 100%. We only have a three-hour, three-hour, 20-minute drive to Wapishka. Okay, good. Even though we say we're taking our time with the added responsibility of the kids and their happiness, it's not really, you know, we're not sitting around doing nothing for long periods of time ever. <laughs> Yeah, so, anyways, we're just stuck behind a couple of trucks hauling some sort of uh, equipment for some large machinery. Now, Hydro Quebec uses this road a lot because of the uh, all the dams, five dams. Manic 1, 2, 3. Have we passed Manic 4 yet? I don't know if we'll see Manic 4, but Manic 5 is the big one we're going to be passing in not too long. Probably 160 kilometers. Station Wapishka is 100 kilometers north of Manic 5. Oh, okay. That's that's a description he gave me when I called. So okay. he said we're 100 kilometers north of Manic 5, and I was like, what? I don't know what that is. Anyways, I looked it up, and it makes sense. So, oh, these guys are letting me pass. Let's hope there's no logging truck around this bend, you know what I mean? Petro Quebec. To a gas stop. Oh, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Well, we are all gassed up. Got a tight turn to make here. And uh, more beautiful country to drive through. Got a full tank. Wouldn't have wanted to miss that uh, gas station or we would have been getting into our jerry cans, but that's why we bring them. Sometimes gas stations are closed or non-existent. And the further north we go, the more remote we're getting. So good, good idea to have gas. We are an hour and a half away from our destination, which is Station Wapishka which is about 120 kilometers north of Manic 5, which we are approaching right now. That would mean that we're getting to camp at about 5.30, which is a great time, enough time to get set up and make dinner for the kids. What I'm really enjoying about this drive so far, or this you know trip so far in general, is just that we've been doing all of our driving during the day, so we haven't had to drive at night, except for the first day which was, you know, in Ottawa, so it wasn't a huge deal, but whoa! Manic 5 Dam. Dam's at Manic Manicoaga River. It's the fifth dam, fifth and final dam on the Manicoaga River. That is a dam. Is... Labrador City, there's a sign. This is the sharp turn. That we saw on the map. This is a bunch of switchbacks to get up this. Look at this. Damn, I can't get over it, it's huge. Look at the wide turn this guy has to take, wow. That's how sharp of a corner it is. That's it from here on out, gravel, eh?
driving along the shores of Lac Manic Wagon. Look at wow. that. Wow. Incredible. You're my downfall. You're my mute. My worst distraction. My rhythm is loose. This is how far north we are. This is James Bay. Us in the arrow, so we're pretty far north. We are 41 kilometers away from our campsite. We're going to be camping on the shores of Lac Manicouagan at Station Wapishka. There's one island right in the middle, um, so it's one big circular lake. And just to put it into perspective, we are driving along the shores of it right now, so we're going to be driving along the side of this lake for 40 kilometers today. And then we still have, you know, probably another third of the distance of the lake to drive tomorrow. So just to put that into perspective on uh, size of this lake. This is going to be the first vehicle we'll have passed for at least the last... just made a quick little pit stop where there's a nice lookout over Lac Manicouagan. Huddy's fading, but that's okay. We should be at our destination uh, in about 17 minutes. So somehow we managed to get away from our campsite late. And then even though we only had four hours to drive, we're still getting to camp later than we would have liked to, but that's how she goes, I guess. So um, we still thought, man, you know what? I'm gonna pull over and just take in this view of Manicouagan, just the mountain scenery and perfect evening, absolutely beautiful. Um, so we are almost there, but wow, this has uh, not disappointed, this uh, Quebec Highway 389, pretty awesome. This is a gas station. We do not need gas right now, but. When I planned this uh, route and our campsites and everything like that and the distance that we would go, um, the longest travel day that we had was the first day, which was like five and a half hours. Today was four and a half. Uh, the next few days we only have about three hours and a bit to go each day. But it's funny how it feels like it sound, four hours does not sound like a long distance to drive, but when you have two small children and a dog that require many pit stops, it does take you all day, it's funny. But that's why we plan to have shorter traveling days because we wanted to allow for enough time to enjoy it and take breaks and you know get the kids out of the car and give them some time to stretch their legs and time to eat and kind of enjoy the the journey because obviously sitting in the back seat isn't going to be as exciting and fun for them Station Wapishka, we made it. We made it. We yeah. drove right past it the first time by a couple of kilometers. I, just, I think I just stared right at the sign as I was driving past it now that I think about it. Anyways, we're here. Looks later than it is because the sun is setting earlier. But yeah, it's, it's for six o'clock. Station Wapishka, thinking we'd be here plenty before dark, but apparently not. And uh, Tori went in, and uh, are we driving off the road? No, that's good, that's always nice. 
and um, we had a reservation, just a campsite reservation, but this is like a wilderness area. This place is completely off grid. Just to build this road into Manicuagan Lake off of the off of the main highway is like a serious bunch of money and work. And so I guess Station Wapishka is just a an outpost, basically, just a remote outpost here in northern Quebec. And um, they offer uh, some adventures. I mean, there's, you know, they've made some hiking trails and, um, you know, a jumping off point like an outfitter for paddling trips on Manicouagan and stuff like that. I'm, I'm kind of guessing uh, a little bit, but uh, seems like a pretty cool place. So we're hoping we can, we're camping right on Manicouagan. That look down there looks beautiful. I'm not gonna want to leave tomorrow, honey, you know? Take the day off tomorrow. Take Look at this tomorrow. spot. We gotta get the kids out of the car, but day off. oh my god, Lac Manica Wagon! Yay, we're here. We're at a campsite, bud. There you go. Oh. Tonight is Hamburger Helper beef stroganoff with the leftover beef from Maybe last night's that. dinner. Oh yeah, that's great. Here you go. Honey wants a bottle. Hey, bud. You look like Jim. You look like Jim. Hey, bud. And, uh, yeah, we, we wish we were here earlier. It's getting dark. It's getting dark earlier nowadays, so we wish we were here a bit earlier, but we we got to camp, oh, like six, maybe. We rolled in here like six, by the time we got to camp, it would have been later. Um, uh, so we didn't get to enjoy much in the daylight, but we saw the sun setting, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So the highway was in pretty good condition, so, you know, things are starting to get more developed as the years go on and the majority of this highway is paved now we do drive on some uh some gravel for quite some time though feeling like 
I don't want to leave this place. It's going to be tough to leave this place. Uh, there's kind of a lot of unknowns ahead of us on where we're going to camp. Do we have to camp right off the side of the Trans Labrador Highway? Or is there a spot where we can, you know, be a little further? You know, is there, is there a spot that's maybe a little more picturesque, we'll say, that's a little nicer to, to pull off? We don't know. This so far is definitely taking the cake as far as uh, awesome places to camp. Like, I'm loving this. I feel like I'm wilderness camping yet. We, have, we got our truck in here without any issues, so pretty cool. Tomorrow we are going to camp near Labrador City, so we will officially be in Labrador tomorrow, which is super exciting. I feel like the trip's just going to keep getting better and better, so... Pretty freaking cool, man. I can just take down the tent, I guess. Here we are. It is the morning of day six of our adventure. Woke up to some rain this morning. Pretty heavy rain too. It died off and then as we were starting to uh, cook breakfast and stuff, it really picked up. So I set up the awning on the uh, off-grid trailer, which I'd never set up this style of awning before. And believe me, it is super easy. It just folds like this and you just tie the sides back and it's sort of like... Uh, I guess kind of like an accordion style, but you don't need to put feet out and guide those feet down. So super easy set up and tear down. And uh, of course I uh, folded my tent up and got it all stowed away. Um, breakfast today, bacon and eggs. And uh, Huddy has been in uh, quite a rambunctious mood for the most part. He's been um, wanting to explore. So me and Tori really need to keep an eye on him because he keeps trying to like make a run for it. And he goes off this kind of trail up towards there's an old decrepit cabin up there and he seems to just like be obsessed with wanting to explore anyways uh yeah um not the nicest morning the rain kind of definitely cooled things off but super beautiful spot we opted with no fire today we were even considering staying an extra day here because it's so awesome like this is by far our best spot yet but um you know as soon as we get into these remote areas stuff just gets amazing you know at the same time it was a rainy day maybe if it wasn't rainy we'd do that and we got to make it to labrador city today too so we got about four hours to drive today it's going to be sad to say goodbye to the spot and since we're not coming back past this way i don't know when the next chance for us to come here will be but me and tori have already planned a canoe trip um, down the mushala gain which i believe is a tributary of Lake Manicouag and so we'd park here and meet a float plane would fly us out so I think we're going to be doing that trip um, because uh, this country behind me is definitely beckoning for me to just immerse myself in it so awesome feel really privileged to get the chance to spend a night here.
Mmm, like that. Mm. Good job, Wes.